There have been some wicked people throughout history, but whenever I talk about Leopold and the Congo, the room gets quieter than a Ghislaine Maxwell case. By the way, what happened with that? A dude was so horrible that, like a high school assignment, I encourage you to do your own research. People often ask me, did he help people? And I'm like, well, he helped himself and he is people, so I guess he should be on the list of the most evil people to ever set foot on this earth. Who is this guy here, you ask? Well, it's none other than King Leopold II of Belgium. If you read some of the things that this man did to Africans, you'd be like, Hitler, is that you? Do you have a twin? This guy was special, not like a Cristiano Ronaldo type special because he had to work for every single thing he has. I'm talking about like a Lionel Messi type special. He was born with it. It's natural to him. It's in his blood. At the height of European imperialism, King Leopold II used Congo as his own personal playground. Between 1880 and 1920, the population of Congo was slashed by 50% because it was estimated that this man killed about 10 million people. The man was so evil that even the French and the British were like, <laughs> that's King Leopold, everybody. <laughs> yeah, crazy dude. <laughs> dude, calm down. You're going to ruin it for everybody. They were like, uh-uh, mm -mm, don't compare us to him. While Europe was dividing Africa up, King Leopold II said he was going to do some humanitarian work in Congo to convert, wait for it, Africans into civilized Christians. Ah, yes, Christianity. Anyway, King Leopold was in Congo stealing rubber and using the locals as his slaves. People would need to meet quotas when picking the rubber. If they didn't, they'll be murdered and then their hands will be cut off. If you're lucky enough, you won't be murdered, but your hands will be cut off anyway. This man has to be the dumbest businessman of all time. He slashed his labor in half. And for those living, a lot of them don't have hands. And if you try to escape, the limbs of your relatives will be cut off. So basically, your hands were tied. He killed and mutilated Congolese people in many different ways, but his favorite was cutting off their hands and then taking photos with them. Now you know where selfie started. He hired Congolese soldiers to do his dirty work. Now, the soldiers were given only a few bullets and if they killed somebody, they would have to cut off their right hand of the person as proof. This is where it gets even more messed up. If a soldier used the bullet for any other reason like killing an animal, what they would do is they would go to the closest village, cut the right hand off a random person, serve it to King Leopold as proof that they've used the bullet for the right purpose. Ironically, he claimed to have the most beautiful hands in Europe. Well, I guess that's until he came to Africa and he was like, hey, who are these people with beautiful hands? That's it, cut them off. He also hated music. Now, I've only met one person who's ever admitted to me that they don't like music. I mean, who doesn't like music? The man had a sportsman-like mentality. He was always trying to break records. He was like, well, I cut off a thousand hands last week. I wonder how many hands I can cut off this week. Reports of his crimes became an international scandal. So he was forced to relinquish Congo to the Belgian government. <laughs> That's like being eaten by a shark and then a crocodile comes to rescue you. You're like, oh, God damn it. Thank you, I guess. Today, the population of the Democratic Republic of Congo is 108 million. They got back to making babies. <laughs> they were like, you're trying to stop us. Ah, the devil is a liar. 